Bears looking deep down the left side. Mendenhall into the end zone. Touchdown. host Trevor Horn it is Thursday October I keep forgetting 25th and it is we're waiting in last few days of October which means it's the central section playoffs they are all in full steam we are brought to you here by Grapevine MSP and Motor City Buick GMC if you're watching us on our Varsity Live Facebook page go ahead and comment in if you got any questions I'll be reading those all throughout the show today uh, sorry about the late start we've got some technical difficulties we are in the process of moving from our downtown location out to Pegasus here in the next coming weeks. And so you can't see it, but it is just changes all around for us here at the California. And so, uh, you know, just bear with us. We still got the show and uh, we got some exciting times. A lot of things coming up. Uh, girls Golf Central Section Championships coming up on Monday. That's coming up on, off the heels of the South Area Championships, which was this past Monday when Liberty Junior Reagan Barton won the South Area title with the three over par 75 on Monday over at North Kern. She had an eagle on hole number one, which propelled her to the title there as Frontier repeats as the South Area champs. So we have three teams. It is Stockdale, Liberty, and the Champs Frontier, all moving on as teams to Central Section Championships, which will be played Monday up at River Island Country Club outside of Porterville near Springvale. Uh, and then we've got, I believe, seven other individual golfers, all of them shot 95 or lower. They're all moving on to Monday's action in the Central Section Championships against the rest of the – Section's best teams, which also includes all the new schools from the Central Coast. You'll see players from Atascadero, Paso Robles, San Luis Obispo, Mission Prep, those type of schools in the Central Section Championship and girls golf for the first time. Water polo playoffs start next Wednesday. Those seedings will come out in just a few. This weekend, the South Area Girls Tennis Individual and Doubles Qualifiers start off. Peyton Wren's a senior at Liberty. She's the number one seed in the South area with Margot Cooney, the senior at BHS. She's number two. Kayla Coe from Stockdale. She's the three seed. And Alana Young at a Centennial rounds out the top four in the singles seeded for the uh, qualifying matches with the Central Section Individual Championships coming up a week after that up in Visalia. On the double side, the number one team is Alexia Julius and Jackie Sala out of Garces. The number two seeded doubles team is Stockdale's Greta, Greta Kruger and Kirsten Anderson. So those are your top two doubles. Let's look up at what's going to happen tonight, and that's the first round of the volleyball playoffs. We'll start off. Garces is at home. Once again, the Rams are the four seed. They're the highest Kern County team in play tonight. Liberty is the three seed, but the top three seeds in Division One have buys starting tonight. So Central, Buchanan, Liberty on buys. So Garces is the highest seed in action tonight, taking on Mission Prep out of San Luis Obispo. Garces finished second in the SWIL. Also in action, Centennial is at Royal Grande. It looks like we don't have the BHS matchup there. That's fine. I'll let you know BHS is at home as the sixth seed. They're taking on number 11, Clovis West. Um, and then finally in Division One, we're missing another one for some reason. I apologize. Frontiers on the road at Clovis West. In Division Two, BCHS, the SYL champs are the three seed, and they're at home against Atascadero, while Tehachapi is on the road at Mount Whitney in Visalia. Those are the only two teams in Division Two and Division Three tonight. Mission Oak out of Tulare is hosting Delano in the 8-9 matchup. Also, we've got East on the road out in Santa Maria at number three, Reggetti, and finally Highland also on the road at Madera South in Division Three. Moving on to Division Four, Miramonte, the top seed, the only number one seed out of Kern County in the playoffs. The Lions are at home tonight. We'll have Steve Lynch out at that one. They're taking on Orange Cove in the 116 matchup. That starts at 6 o'clock. Also, Porterville hosting McFarland tonight in D4 action, and Strathmore hosting Taft. And finally, in Division 5 action in girls' volleyball opening round tonight, Cal City is hosting Baker. 
and then Kennedy's on the road at road, excuse me, at Kings Christian at a Lamore, Delano and Rosamond, the Kern County matchup, and Fraser Mountain, the two seed, is at home against Trona. Moving on to girls semifinal tennis action. These will take place on Halloween, so that's next Wednesday. Stockdale on the road at Clovis North. The Mustangs have actually – let's go ahead and stay on that one for just a second, Diana. The Mustangs have actually won two road games because, if you remember last week, there were five teams at Kern County that got dinged for not getting their paperwork turned in in time. So Stockdale is a 5 seed, had to travel – two and a half miles to BCHS, beat the Eagles 9-0, and then Stockdale traveled two hours down to San Luis Obispo on Tuesday and won 6-3 in the quarterfinals to move on. So Stockdale on the road at Clovis North. In Division Two. BHS also was a victor a victorious in the 5-4 matchup in the quarterfinals, beating Morro Bay 5-4, and the Drillers advance to the semifinals in D2, and they'll be on the road at number one Redwood out of Visalia. In Division Three, the lone team that's going to be home in the semifinals, that's North. The Stars defeated Independence 5-3 in a very, very competitive quarterfinal matchup. Both teams were 3-3 three and three in singles action, and then North was able to take the one and the three seed in the doubles to secure the victory, and they won 5-3. to three. So the Stars are moving on to the semifinals for the third year in a row. But this time, first time at home, and they will take on Tulare Western, who is a sixth seed. And then we've got two teams in Division Four: Highland on the road at Central Valley Christian out of Visalia in the 1-4 matchup. And then East was victorious in the 3-6 matchup in the quarterfinals. And East will be at number two, Kerman in the tennis semifinals of Division Four, So we got a lot of stuff coming up. It's exciting. Starts with volleyball tonight, tomorrow, obviously football, and then the first rounds of girls tennis. Saturday, it'll be the second round, the qualifying matchups in girls tennis in the South Area qualifying. Uh, also, football playoffs will be announced. I will be up in Porterville during the selection committee, so we will go live on Facebook right after that and we'll get you guys all caught up as quickly as we can with who's playing where and who's the highest seed and who's in and who's out in football playoffs and then monday you've got girls golf section championship tuesday is the quarterfinals in volleyball wednesday is the semifinals in tennis so you got a lot of stuff coming up and also the first round obviously uh like we said water polo first round is on halloween as well so we got a lot of stuff to go through over the next week we're going to take a quick break when we come back bhs liberty football is tomorrow night over griffith field let's listen in we'll listen into that right after this break we'll be right back Hey everybody, this is Trevor Horn from B-Varsity. Football season is back, and once again, we've got you covered. Whether it's our print edition of the Bakersfield, California, and our website at Bakersfield.com, our social media accounts, all at B-Varsity Live, or even our post-game show, which starts at 11.15 every Friday night, right here at Bakersfield.com, and our B-Varsity Live Facebook page. We've got you covered. Tune in. Everybody, this is Trevor Horn from B Varsity. Football season is back, and once again, we've got you covered. Whether it's our print edition of the Bakersfield, California, and our website at bakersfield.com, our social media accounts, all at B Varsity Live, or even our post game show, which starts at 11 15 every Friday night, right here at bakersfield.com, and our B Varsity Live Facebook page, we've got you covered. Tune in.
Live. I'm your host, Trevor Horn. We're in the TBC downtown studios for now. We're moving soon. Soon. Soon, I think. Uh, we are brought to you by Grapevine MSP and Motor City Buick GMC. Tomorrow night, BHS Liberty. Both teams are undefeated in the Southwest Yosemite League. We'll get more into this matchup during the prediction segment. But obviously, this game has a lot of playoff implications. It's the top two ranked teams in Kern County, and both the coaches and the players from both sides eager to get this one started tomorrow night. Let's listen in. Oh, it's always exciting. You know, it's just it's become that rivalry, and it's something that you look forward to. And uh, They're a good program, well coached, good football players, and, uh, you know, we're trying to put ourselves in a good position to be in a good seed for the playoffs and, and win the league championship. So, no, that, that doesn't get old. That's fun. That's the excitement of playing this game. They took care of their business in the league. We did. We took care of our business in the league, and it's it's really it's a it's a playoff game. I mean, that's how we're looking at it. Oh yeah, this is probably the most fun that we had throughout these uh, four past few weeks because I mean, this is the game that we really been uh, waiting for, and I mean, it's 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 kind of good that we're playing Liberty because this is the real test for the playoffs, and uh, for us, this is the start of the playoffs. So we'll see how we do. I feel like uh, we'll do good. I'm comfortable. We, we, I mean, we have what we have is special, and uh, I hope they're ready. Do you actually feel a, a little bit more of, you know, excitement in the air this week than you do, you know, the other weeks? Oh, man, I hate to say it, but yes, you do, because it's just a, cha it's a championship, of course, and it's them, so it's just, you know, the you, everybody knows how this week goes. It's the rivalry, so you really want it. Sam's that guy that's really hard to get off the field. One, he loves the game of football. Two, he's super, super savvy. And three, he's pretty dang good. So, you know, those three things right there are kind of, it's hard to take a kid off the field. And, uh, you know, his smile, his attitude, his his approach to the game is always fun. And he busts his tail, and I think his, his peers appreciate that. When you look at your senior leaders of what they've accomplished over the last four years and what they're going to leave on this last regular season game here Friday night, is there anything more that you could have asked of these guys? Uh, the, I'm gonna, uh, we're going to miss these guys, uh, you know, for sure. It's, uh, they're, not only are they great football players, but they're great kids. I mean, they're, them in the weight room, it's, it's, it's fun to watch those guys work out. It really is. Uh, so, you know, as a coach, you want that senior class to leave on a, on, a, on a high. You want them to win the last game of the year. Doesn't care about the first first ten, but the last game of the year is the most important. And, and we wish that for these guys for sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm, it's a lot of feelings and emotions. It's senior night um, on Friday, and it's just it just feels different playing for something. Playing for something is a lot different now. You know, the other seniors have been through this before. This is your first chance. Um, how exciting is it for you to get this game at Griffith Field and play against the Drillers? Uh, it's really exciting. Just my first league championship, and everybody's going to be there. The biggest game of the year every year, so it, it's it's a good opportunity for me and the team. And here you guys are. Usually you play this game, you take a week off, and then you get into the quarterfinals. But like we talked about, it looks like there's only going to be two buys because mm -hmm. it looks like there's going to be 14, 15 teams in the playoffs this year with the Central Coast teams in. Right. Um, how key is it to play this game, win this game, stay healthy, and get ready right away for the playoffs? Well, you, you like to think about the playoffs, but you always have to keep what's in front of you as the most important thing. And, and this Friday night's the most important thing, and then we'll look to the playoffs come Saturday. Um, Friday night's a big game. It's a fun game, and, and that's what we're focused on right now. Playoffs will take care of themselves, and uh, it doesn't look like we're going to get a bye because of the fact of, uh, you know, the added teams that came from the coast, and we always knew that that would take place. But uh, right now, the most important thing is Friday night. When you think about what you guys have to do, I mean, a win means you're at least a three seed. And I don't know if you're looking forward to the playoffs or not, or are you just looking at this game and trying to get better this week? Or are you looking at, do the kids know the implications of what a win means? You know, my, my normal answer is we, we, we focus on ourselves. And that, and that answer is still true, except this is different than most years because this is for a number two seed, right? I mean, we're coming in as a league champion or, or Liberty's coming in as a league champ. We have a, a opportunity to go in number two, which means we'd be home until the finals, you know, if we took care of business. So this this isn't a typical year. The other, the other thing that's not typical about it is normally we pretty much know we're playing them again. And, and if, if, it, if it's right that we're one through four, we're not going to see them again unless it's in the championship. So that, that's also a little bit different than normal. Um, you know, 
on the field is on the field, off the field is off the field. So it's it's just however it's gonna be. If you do win, it's a, it's exciting because you have a bye week and you have two weeks to really prepare for the next team, and uh, I feel like that's more exciting to us. Day they're asking if we're gonna win, and I'm just telling them to be there and to find out. We want as many people to support us. Say if we do get the win, it'll it'll, it'll be a, the best feeling ever. Um, second seed and a bye, and uh, all home games through um, Valley, so it, it'll be fun. I'm stoked about this one tomorrow night. I'll be out there. A lot of fun. League championship on the line. Now we bring in Josh Bennett and John Metis. Gentlemen, hello. Hi. Hello. How are you? Been here the entire time. I know. You've just <laughs> been chilling. Yeah. Nobody knew that, though. Uh-uh. No, because Diana kept the camera off you yeah, guys, the sadly. Magic of, of a... Uh, Which is weird, yeah, because the camera usually likes Josh, so... Yeah. yeah, camera doesn't like me, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's get right into it. Let's... Uh... Do you guys remember July 23rd? Yeah, it was about as hot as it is now. <laughs> It, it feels. It seems like it was just yesterday. Yeah. Thank you for reading my lead. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing is that like everything feels weird this year. Yeah. New Central Coast teams, obviously, the start to the season. You know, usually it's the first week in November. We've already had Halloween by the time we're talking about this. So mm-hmm. here we are in the final regular season week. So we've got a handful of schools around Kern County that aren't playing football past Friday night this season. Yeah, and this is it for a lot of them. They, yeah, they're, they're not going to play. And then, and, you know, the rest of them, they got to gear up because and play next week because there's not going to be a lot of buys either. Maybe Division Two will have three or four buys because there's only I think there's only going to be like 12 teams in D2 mm-hmm. yeah. because it looks like right now in D2, what was it, L.D. Monte and Lamore already are out. Mm-hmm. Um, I know Frontier is going to be in regardless, win or lose tomorrow night. Um but, you know, so there's only going to be 12 teams. So the first four teams in D2 are going to be on a bye. Uh, but it looks like 14 or 15 teams in D1, which means only, you know, the one seed, Central, who plays Clovis East tonight. Yeah. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll wrap up the one seed by about, you know, about two and a half minutes into that game tonight. <laughs> yeah. um, and then D3, it might be a full bracket. Four will be a full bracket. I mean, we're talking about, you know, the majority of the teams that are going to be in the playoffs don't get a bye next week. So you got to go right into it. And if you want to win a central section championship, you've got another month of football. Yeah. And that just sets up the stage for some possible upsets too. Yeah. It's fun because I mean, yeah, you've got to come off the high of a game like, you know, Ridgeview independence, mm-hmm. uh, Wasco Shafter, a BHS Liberty, and then turn around and play in a playoff game against somebody you may not know anything about because yes. In D3, you know, somebody might not know who Morro Bay is. Mm-hmm. Actually, Morro Bay is out of the playoffs. But a team you guys like get that. my point. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean, it's just like March Madness in college basketball. You know, you got these trap games, too. You know, the 4 13, 5 12 matchups. You know, it could, I mean, you think the higher seed would win, but you don't know. But nobody wants to play two playoff games and win a Central Section Championship. No. That's, nobody wants that. No, because that doesn't prove anything. No, it proves nothing. And that's exactly what Tulare Union had to do last year. It was, yeah. it, it was ridiculous. Yeah, a little bit. So it should be better playoffs this year. Much better, much better. So let's get into it. Let's start with the the eight man games. Oh, actually, no. I apologize. We'll start, We're start with tonight's game, Delano against Mission Oak at a Tulare Union. Uh, Delano finally, you know, they're on the road tonight. Up and this game is going to be at Bob Mathias Stadium. Mm-hmm. So that's why they're playing on Thursday night because the big the, one will be Tulare West yeah. Tulare Union tomorrow night right. up at that stadium. So. Here's a winnable game finally for the Tigers. Yeah, the EYL hasn't been kind to them this year. No, I mean, <laughs> you, you know, last week's loss to Menachi, you know, could have been a winner. But Menachi is a fringe team when, t- when we're talking about top 25 teams in the central section. Yeah. Porterville, I might have them too low at 20 in our central section rankings. That's mm-hmm. a really good Porterville team. They beat Hanford earlier this year. Yeah. So I might have them too low. And then, obviously, you've got the two, top two D2 teams in that league as well. Right. So Delano struggling a little bit in league play. It looks like they will be able to. They should be able to get a win uh, tonight. I've got Delano winning this one, 28-13, Josh. Yeah, I'll take Delano 27-21. Although it's a little funny looking at uh, Mission Oaks' record, that, that one win against West. Just, yeah. Mm. I know. You look <laughs> at that and you go, you know, West is – they were a much better team yeah. on August 17th than they are right now just because of injuries. And mm-hmm. I'm not saying anything bad about the Vikings yeah. whatsoever. Yeah. It's, just, it's just a really bad Yeah, loss. it's just the stark reality that yeah. they've lost a lot of players to injury. Mm-hmm. So, yep. So, hopefully, you know, you look at Delano and you think that that team maybe, you know, gets on the board and gets a win because it doesn't look like they're going to the playoffs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yep. Um, I actually do think they're out. I'll double check on that. Okay. All right, let's move into the eight-man games this weekend. Maricopa, winless this season against Sage Oak at a Hesperia. And, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like Maricopa's going to go winless this season. I've got Sage Oak winning this one big. That's a d- really decent football team out of Hesperia, 56-6. to six. Uh, Josh, go ahead and get in my head. Yeah, 56-6. to six. Uh, Maricopa not only winless, but almost scoreless this entire season. So yeah, it's, it's not, not a pretty season for them. I think they just want to get it over with at this point. I wouldn't blame them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, other – this – there's actually two California school for the deaf. This one's out of Riverside. The other one's up in the Bay Area. Yeah, this is so the one Desert, that was Yeah, so Desert's playing featured. Uh, California school for the deaf out of Riverside. Uh, both teams have three wins. They're both three and five this season. However, I think Desert's going to get this one 39 to 12. Yeah, I like Desert uh, 41-34. Josh? That's John. John? Desert. Okay. <laughs> What's your name again? I don't know. All right. <laughs> Who knows? What is a name? Yeah. Final eight-man game this weekend. Fraser Mountain, big win last week. Congratulations to the yeah, Falcons. Getting yeah. the first league win of the season. So they're now 2-5, and 1-5 and five in league play, taking on Alpa. Not Alpo. There, It is not a dog food, I promise <laughs> you. Uh, Alpa is 1-7, and seven, winless in Central Sierra League action. I'm picking Fraser Mountain to win. 33-20. Yeah. Uh, this year we've seen some weird things. Uh Teams like Miramonte are racing 20-plus game losing streaks can get on a decent win streak. Uh, Al- Fraser Mountain could go for three wins for the first time since I've been here in five seasons. Yeah, wow. uh, three wins, a, a win streak to end the season, and I think they could do it here. Uh, Alpaw, I know you can't really take the max preps stuff to heart, but they only have 19 players listed and on their roster. In the That's last- a decent amount for eight-man, though. Yeah, yeah but uh, – Fraser Mountain played a team kind of like this earlier in the season. They picked up the win, so uh, I'm going to favor Fraser Mountain this one, 27-21. Okay, oh, yeah. I dig it. Didn't Fraser Mountain play a team that literally had eight players? Yeah. Yeah. That was one of their uh, two wins. So. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. Okay, let's move into 11-man ball. Burroughs, another team in Kern County that is winless season. The Burroughs, after winning nine games last year and playing for the D9 Southern Section Championship last year, uh, looking for the first big win. They're playing a Hesperia team. Both of these teams are winless in uh, Mojave River League action. I'm going to give it to the the Burroughs. I'm going to throw them a bone. Hopefully they can get something going. I've got them winning 21-14. I really wanted to pick Burroughs on this one. I just can't do it. That's fair. Yeah. I mean, I you don't want to see a team go winless, but it's just, I don't know. It, it's just w- one of these seasons where I, there's just no opening for them, and I, I'll take a spare at 31-20. Okay. Uh, Mr. Metis? Yeah, just can't pick Burroughs, unfortunately. Fair enough. All right. High Desert League action. Kern Valley on the road at Rosamond. Kern Valley 1-8, and 0-3 and in league. Rosamond 2-7, and 0-3 and in league. So one team is going to be winless in league play. One team is going to have one win. I have Kern Valley pulling this one out. When you look at it, Kern Valley has just been a little bit more competitive in league games mm. than Rosamond has. And so the Bronx, I think, are going to find something in this one on the road. I've got Kern Valley winning 20-13. Yeah, you know, I thought I was going off the cuff in this one, but – I honestly had the same exact reason. Kern Valley was uh, more competitive in the high desert league games than Roseman has, so I'm going to take Kern Valley 14-13. Shocker, by the way, everybody, we disagree on a lot of games this week because it's that competitive, and that's what week 11 is supposed to be. That's what yeah. we're going to see You're supposed to have the rivalry games. Where, a lot of toss-ups. Yeah, a lot of toss-ups. So in that one, Kern valley Roseman. Kern Valley. All right, I like it. All right, Cal City at Bishop. The High Desert League Championship will be played on the field tomorrow night. This one starts at 7 o'clock. Cal City 5-3 and three overall, Both and Bishop is 7-2. and two. Both teams 3-0 and oh in league play. The winner is league champs. Bishop, yeah. 42-21 is my prediction in this one. Yeah, uh, Cal City's had themselves a decent year. I mean, you've mentioned the loss to Taft, but uh... – Bishop's just had a stronger resume. When you look at it, the only two losses for Bishop are identical 13-7 to 7 losses. Yeah. Where Which aren't big losses. They're not. And Cal City has actually been blown out a couple times this B- year. They yeah. have. And, yeah, Bishop has the better resume. So I'll take uh, Bishop 35-21. Bishop. All right. There you go. Let's move on to the SSL. Arvin. 5-4 and four this year. Looking for the first six-win season in five years. So the Bears are at home against Taft, a team that's lost seven games in a row. Uh, Edgar Ramirez, man. Love that guy. 
You know, doing great things. Yeah, you know, honestly, he would be a strong contender for Coach of the Year if it wasn't for some of the other stuff going on this year. He's, yeah. He's done, had a great year in Arvin. I cannot disagree with yeah. that argument, that statement. I cannot argue with Arvin. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind I've me. got Arvin, by Yeah, the way. so I've got Just, Arvin winning this yeah. one 35-7. to seven. Yeah, 38-14 Bears, and they'll have November football. Yep. And this is like the seventh time I've picked Arvin this year, or well, eighth. I guess you're just moving to Arvin. Well, I'm, <laughs> you know, I was wrong a couple of those times. So. Yeah. Well, it's a big game for Arvin, too, because, you know, if they win here, they're 6-4 and four over 500, you know, maybe they could sneak into a low-seed home playoff game. You never know. They actually have a chance to be at, up to a 6-seed in yeah, D5. Yeah, so 6, 7, 8-seed, maybe get a home playoff game. Yeah. Much different conversation this time this year than it was this time last year for Arvin. Or the year before or the year before that. Yeah. So congratulations to the Bears for a come up. Another team on the come up, Chavez, winless last year, three and six this year, two or three in league. However, they're playing a Kennedy team that really badly wants to get the taste of that loss to Shafter out of their mouths as quickly as possible. Kennedy is a team that averages 380 rushing yards a game and got bottled up against the Generals last week. Mm. Do you think Kennedy wants to mess around in this game, or do you think they want to put this one to bed early and start thinking about the playoffs? And it's a rivalry game on top of that. They yep. just want to get it. They, they, they'll, they'll, they'll lay the hammer. Yep. yep. I've got Kennedy winning this one 42-13. Uh, yeah, nothing against Chavez. A good turnaround season for them. They're, they're on the up, but uh, – who yeah. likes extra points more I like than I extra do? points. Because you picked it. 42-14. Yep. Kennedy. Yes. Okay. And the big one. The big one. I love this game. I'm going to get up Friday morning and go watch the handshakes. I don't know if I'm going to go to Wasco. I don't know if I'm going to go to Shafter. Probably going to go to Shafter because it's closer to the house. However, this is what this rivalry is supposed to be. This is the 92nd edition of this rivalry. Shafter owns a 42, sorry, 44 42 five advantage over the Tigers. Yep. Wasco will not lay down to the Generals. Absolutely not. They've been looking forward to this game since July, June, whatever. Just look on Twitter how much stuff is going on between those two schools. I love this rivalry. I love everything about it. This is what small school rivalry is supposed to be all about. There is so much pageantry and, you know, heated talk and, you know, trash talking going on. I'm a huge fan of this game. and But what we saw out of Shafter last week, what they did to Kennedy, kind of proves just how good Shafter is. Yeah. They're not just a good small school team. It's a really good football team mm-hmm. regardless. Yeah, period. And they shut down that run game for Kennedy. Mm-hmm. What do Kennedy and Wasco have in common? They love to run the football. Triple option veer. Yep. Shafter showed last week that they can stop it. Yep. And Kennedy, much like Wasco, you know, you could say, oh, well, Wasco's got three guys that have at least 800 rushing yards, led by Joel Romero and Christian Alvarez. So does Kennedy. Yeah, so does Kennedy. Yep. So does Kennedy. So when you look at that, does Shafter have a huge advantage over Wasco? On paper, yes. Yeah. So while I think that Wasco does have a shot in this one, I really don't think so. I don't. I think. I think there's the trappings of it mm-hmm. coming off the high of beating Kennedy so badly and staying undefeated, and then knowing that the playoffs are right around the corner and they're probably not going to get a bye because there's 22 teams in D5. Yeah. You got to look at it and go. You know they might come up short, but Gerald Perucci and that coaching staff, you know, they went and won a lot of playoff games at BCHS, mm-hmm. and the. Generals lost in that semifinals in heartbreak fashion last year in D4. They don't want that kind of heartbreak again. They want the one seed. They want to go 10-0. and 0, And so that's why I think there's not going to be that hangover from Kennedy. Shafter's going to come out, and they're going to get at it quickly. I have Shafter winning this one, 42-28. Yeah, um, I, I previewed Wasco earlier in the year, and I've said this before. The first two words that Coach Martinez said to me was beat Shafter. That, yeah, was, that was their it. goal, period. Um, and back then I was like, okay, sure, you're saying that because it's a rivalry, but Wasco's had a pretty good resume this year. But uh, like you said, Shafter is a great team, period, not just a great small school team. They proved it last week against Kennedy. And with Wasco and Kennedy having, kind of having the same makeup here, um, got to favor Shafter in this one. But, but I'll tell you this right now before we get to your prediction, John. Gerald Perucci, the head coach for Shafter last week, right after the game, still on the field, said, guys – it doesn't matter even if we won a central section championship this year. 
There are people in this town that don't care about anything other than beating Wasco. Exactly. Yeah, and that and that's the thing too. Normally, any other situation, this would be a game. Oh, they might overlook them. Looking forward to the playoffs. No, they. This chapter is more focused on this game probably as Wasco is. Yep. This is yep. the game for them. Period. Yep. And this is not going to be an overlook game. Your score prediction? Uh, forty nine thirty. I don't think it'll be much of a blowout as last week because of the rivalry. But I think Shafter pulls away in the end. Yeah, I mean, weird. John, but- you're going to this game, by the way. Am I? Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> uh, Try tip before the game is phenomenal. Okay. Thanks for the recommendation. You're welcome. I'll make a note of that. Raul, feed this man tomorrow night. Raul Rangel, if you're watching this, and you should be, feed this man tomorrow night. Anyway, uh, you know, weird things can happen. Look at how skinny he is. In rivalry games. He but needs to eat. It's Shafter is a... His mom's not here to cook. You know what? Who cares what prediction I have? <laughs> no, go ahead. I'm just giving you Shafter. No, no. That's all I had to say, Shafter. No, no. Go ahead. You talk about rivalries. Yeah, weird things well, happen. Yeah, the weird things happen. These teams know each other well. Maybe Wasco saw something on the film from last week that they were like, oh, Kennedy could have done this, but they didn't. Or maybe they learned from Kennedy's mistakes. But Shafter is just the better team. And this... I just don't see any way they lose this game, regardless of what the score is. I think it'll be a competitive game at points, but I cannot see Shafter losing this game. Okay. That's it. All right, let's move into the SEYL. Uh, Foothill, winless this season. Miramonte is 2-7. and seven. Both teams winless in the SEYL. You look at paper, Miramonte's got two wins. You'd think they'd be the favorite. Uh, not so fast, my friends. <laughs> when you think about it, you look at Foothill – They've actually been quite competitive in league games this year. Yeah, the South game and the East game. Yeah, exactly. They only lost two touchdowns to South, a 28-14 loss. And then last week they were very competitive mm-hmm. against East, which is still undefeated, which means that East has already beaten Highland and – I'm blanking. North. North, yeah. Yes. Yeah, sorry, because it's North-South next week. Right. So when you look at that, I really think – and I, I'm going to go out on a limb here, and I think Foothill has a chance to win this one just based on the simple fact that they've been more competitive. And when you look at the two wins for Miramonte, as great as that is for those guys to be able to get two wins, they're against high desert teams like Rosamond and Kern Valley that are playing for last place yeah. in the in the high desert league. So And, and you, I, got, you got to think, if Foothill played those games, they would probably they win probably them too. They probably would have won too. Yeah. So I'm going to give Foothill the advantage here. I think it's going to be a low-scoring, close game. I've got Foothill winning 13-12. I'm going to give Miramont to the edge just because they're at home, uh, 2017. Okay. Foothill, get the first win. There you go. Get off the snide. Yeah. Get Brandon Deckard his first win as head coach. All right. Battle of the Sword tomorrow night at South. Love this game. Love this rivalry. Much like Shafter, Wasco. Uh, they have a midweek dinner together. They sit together. They mm-hmm. sit across from each other. It's a you know, that's what high school rivalry is supposed to be about. It's not just about hating the other guy. It's about understanding that it's still just a game, but there yep. is a lot a uh, lot at stake here. Both teams are 3-1 and one in league play. Shared league title still on the line. The shared league title is still on the line. We'll get to that in just a second. Yep. And so you've got two teams that want to finish the regular season on high now. Of course. After some lulls here, you know, mid to two, late regular two season. Two very inconsistent teams. This very, year. very inconsistent teams. I agree. Um, but I think South has kind of righted the ship over the last couple of weeks to an extent where, you know, North lost their starting quarterback to an injury. It appears that Shannon Ferguson might be dealing with some collarbone issues. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's going to deal with it, so they're going to have to lean heavily on the run game with Chris Romero, while Chris Romero is one of the top rushers in Kern County this year. That leaves North a little bit one-dimensional and takes James Johnson out of the offense yep. unless they find him in like in an H-back position. Mm-hmm. So you look at that. It's a home game for South. A little bit of a trapping. I've got South when it's won 22-21 in a close game. Uh, all valid points you made, but I'm going to ignore, ignore them all. Thank and, you. And uh, take a guess who I'm going to Appreciate the honesty. Yeah. Hmm. I'm the mother. <laughs> 30, 34, 31 stars. You know, bring I was it, bring it at, home, please. I was uh, out at the tennis quarterfinals for the stars. Yeah. You know, the, the tennis courts are right near the football practice mm-hmm. field now. Uh, you know, the football practice field is right in between the tennis courts and the, the new basketball yeah. gym. So they're out there, and something must have happened in the middle of practice because they were running laps. Mm. And all you hear is, uh, what's the old block chant? What? Oh. Who block? Oh, block. Oh, yeah. And so they're just chanting. I'm like, 
the O block is just stuck in my head right now. So, but I've got South one in this one, John. I've got South. I think they've been playing a little bit better the last couple weeks than they had been maybe mid season. Yep. Okay, and East, check this one out. East in their first season in the SEYL after moving over from the SYL. Undefeated in league play, despite starting the season 1-4, and four, they're taking on Highland at home in the neighborhood rivalry. Highland 5-4, and 2-2 two and two in league play. However, this is a trap game for East. I agree. I think that East has gotten the best of everybody else in league. However, I think Highland might actually be the team to beat here. Um you look at the Scots, those are a bunch of senior leaders that have played in tight games, played in big games over the last three years, and that defense really is going to come to play. Yeah, and lost a close one to South last week, too. Exactly. So when you look at it, I think this is going to be a defensive battle, and if you're asking for a defensive battle between these two programs, I really do think it's going to be Highland and their senior leaders. I mm-hmm. mean, you talk about their, sox, their top six tacklers are all returning starters from last season. Yeah. So when you look at that, I kind of look at it, and, you know, we thought about, you know, how the SEY was a three-way tie last year. And we're like, oh, they're getting six teams in it now. They're going to have to play, f- you know, five games. You're not going to get a three-way tie. However, <laughs> it you're going to get at least a two-way tie this time because you're going to get – I'm picking Highland, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. So, you go, I've got Highland win this one, 34-27. If that plays out, you've got East and then the winner of North-South sharing the league title. Yep. So, East – will win at least a share of the league title. They did that last week. Mm-hmm. And then here you go. I've got Highland winning an upset on the road, 34-27. Yeah. Uh, East has been playing very well in league. Uh, the quarterback, Richard Lars, has been just playing lights out this past month. So credit to him. But, uh, yeah, I mean, like you said, I East is 4-0, but I just can't trust them, you know. And I'll take Highland in a squeak or 27-20. I'm on the East bandwagon. Okay. Have at it. Chad Greider is a heck of a quarterback. Richard Lawrence is a great quarterback. Oh, yeah. Sorry, great coach. Chad Greider is a coach. I'm sure he could play quarterback. Yeah, he could play quarterback. I'm sure he can. All right, let's move in the SYL. Uh, West on the road up to Hatchby. Chili, chili, chili up there. West um, is in the must-win situation. Yeah, and like we said earlier, that Mission Oak game coming back to haunt them. Yeah, so they're four and five overall, one and three in league play, playing to Hatchby, who is right now, if they lose this game, it'd be the first time since nineteen sixty one since the Warriors went two and seven. And according to the great website THSWarriors.com, uh if win percentage alone, a two hundred win percentage would be the lowest one since the World War Two era Jeez, for to Hatchby geez. because you have to go back that far to find a Tatchby team that had a worse losing percentage because they went 2-4-2 two, two in 1961. Uh, sorry, in 1941. So, I mean, you're going back historically that this is not a good season for Tatchby. No. Nope. Uh-uh. West is in a must-win situation, so you know those guys are going to get up. You know Derek Dunham, the head coach, is going to get them working. And I really do think that you're going to get Damani Jackson, who's filled in great at running back for West mm-hmm. since LJ Lalau went down with an injury. Yeah. And I think that's going to propel West. The fact that they're a must win to be able to get into the D3 playoffs is a, is a factor. Yeah. And so I've got West winning this one, moving to 500, going on to the playoffs, 27-13. I, do, I have West 24-16. Uh, just this isn't a hatch year. I year. I don't know what's going on up there, but nothing's working. And – you got a favor West in this one. Yep. And uh, John? Yeah, but it's a bad year for Tatchby. I don't think you can pick him in this one. Yep. Uh, by the way, guys, if you guys are watching this live on our Facebook page, go ahead and give a comment if you have any questions for us. I read them right here as we're going through. Let's move on in the SEYL. Love this game. Number 17, Ridgeview at Independence. Neighborhood rivalry game. Both teams 6-3 and three and 3-1 three and one overall. Um, Thought it was going to be for the league title. Now it's going to be for second place. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. It's going to be for second place. And it's really interesting when you look at kind of the trajectory of these two programs. You've got an independence team, won seven games last year. Lucas Lucero steps down. Mm -hmm. Tyler Schilhobel comes in as a head coach. They've played up, and I think they've exceeded expectations this year. Ridgeview came into this season incredibly talented. And they still are incredibly talented. They are but they're not showing it on the field. Yep. Sadly, Elijah Alexander-Williams is out for the season with a broken leg. Yeah. Dalen DeGraff and Reed did not play last week because of pulled groin. Mm-hmm. So now you got to factor. You've got one two-way superstar out, 
possibly another one out. That's a lot of dings on Ridgeview. It There's is. still a lot of great football players. We're independents. They're healthy. They're ready to go. This is at home. It's senior night. They're going for a seventh win for the second year in a row. Mm-hmm. I've got independents winning this one just based on the simple fact I think independents wants this game more than Ridgeview. Oh, absolutely. And so I've got it 35 28 independents. Yeah. And independents, obviously, a great story this year. Tyler Show Hobble and what he's done there. But uh, you look at Ridgeview's resume. Um, Two of the losses, BHS Liberty, get rid of those. Their only loss, real loss this season was uh, to BCHS. BCHS, sixteen to ten. 10. 10. No offensive touchdown. Exactly, but you look at the Independence game, and they got run out of the building that game. So, mm-hmm. I think on that fact alone, you just got to think Ridgeview is the uh, more talented team here. And yes, I, of course they are. But but, it, but that doesn't always play out on the field. I agree, but their three losses were to three of the best teams in the in the city. Fair. That's a fair and point. Independence isn't that level. I still level. disagree. That's fine. Independence, I don't think, is that, at that level. I think it'll be close, but I think Ridgeview edges it out 42-38. I've got Ridgeview in this one, too. You know, Like Josh said, looking at the BCHS loss last week for Independence, and I keep picking Ridgeview, so they've got to prove me right eventually, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> one of these days. One yeah. of these days. Maybe. All right, final game in the SYL. Not really going to be much of a game tomorrow night, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry yeah. to say this. Golden Valley, like we said all year, has 18 players. Um, I think that these – got to figure they're just ready for this thing to get over with. Yeah. They like they had, they had their one shot a couple weeks ago against Hatchapi, and it just didn't work out. So. Yeah, they have no kicker. They yeah. can't kick the ball, so they had to go for the two-point conversion. Uh, they did not get it, so they had a 6-0 lead late. Hatchapi comes in, scores a touchdown, kicks the extra point. That's the winner. Yeah. No field goal options for Golden Valley this week. Um, I really think this is going to be a game that's going to be over long before halftime even starts. I mean, uh, you got to think. CHS doesn't want to get hurt. Yeah, I was, I was about to say, are they even going to play the starters tomorrow? I, I mean, obviously they have to win this game. Yeah, but. because they. They need to secure the two seed in D three. Of course, but I mean, you know, plan for three it. series or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Get just, it, 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 it's like a scrimmage points and it, or something. Yeah. And I'm not saying any of this to knock head coach Josh, ba- Josh, Josh Bacher, Bacher yeah. or any of the players in no. Golden Valley. It's just a stark reality that this is a team that is not going to be competitive tomorrow night. You know, BCHS is going to go, you know, undefeated in league play for the first time in the SYL and for the fifth year in the overall. This is a team that's. Still hasn't lost a league game under Darren Carr Mm -hmm. in his fourth year as head coach. Um, You know, you just hope nobody gets hurt and the Eagles can move on into the playoffs without any major injuries and Golden Valley can right the ship somehow in the offseason. That's all it is. Yeah, they can get some more numbers. I've got a low scoring affair, 35 6 BCHS. I'll go 56 6 because the backups will probably play most of the game and I don't pick shutouts. That's fair. Yeah, hopefully we can just. Both sides, run the ball, make it a quick game, and let's get out of there. Yeah. Yep. BCHS. Okay, we got 15 minutes of three more games to look at, but they're all big games. You look at this one right here. This is a huge D2 playoff implication game yep. in the Southwest Yosemite League. You have a Garces team as one of the strongest schedules in the central section this year. They are 3-6 and six overall, 2-2 two and two in league. They're moving on the D2 playoffs, win or lose, and they are on the road at Stockdale. Stockdale is also... Moving on to the D2 playoffs, win or lose, they are 4-5, and 1-3 and three in league. You look at these two teams, you look at Garces, and they've been competitive, competitive against BHS. They scored 20 points against the Drillers. Mm-hmm. They were not competitive last week against Liberty. You were at that game. Their only offensive touchdown, that was last week, right? Yes, yeah. Yeah, that was last week. The only offensive touchdown that they had against the Liberties was on a muff punt, and they scored from, like, you know, they started that They drive recovered with, it at like the six or something or the eight. And, exactly. Yeah. And then you look at a Stockdale team where Evan Burkhart was kind of bottled up against those two incredible defenses for BHS and Liberty. But since he's moved over to quarterback, he's been electric yeah. for the Mustangs. Last week, last second play, throws a touchdown pass to Brandon Dunn. And Stockdale got the first league win since 2015, 2016, mm-hmm. in almost two years. Yeah. You know, beating uh, Frontier 36-30, last week. So that's the first win for them since October 21st, 2016. So you're talking about two calendar years. Yeah. The Mustangs have gone without a league win. So they secure that week, league win. And when you look at this, I look at this as another trap game too. Stockdale's at home. It's a senior night. Evan Burkhart, only a junior, wants to leave those seniors on the right note at home because they probably won't get 
you know, a home game in the playoffs, but they are moving on to the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And when you look at those situations, you look at these games, and it's week 11, and are you starting to look ahead to the playoffs? Are you not looking ahead to the playoffs? I think Evan Burkhart is the X factor here. I've got Stockdale edging this one out. 28-27, Josh, you disagree. I do. Uh, you a, a line from you time and time again this year is Garces is better than the record indicates. We probably said that about them for the past three or four seasons at this point. Yeah, because they play. Because they play tougher schedule. Yeah, they play Memorial yeah. in the Holy Bowl. They play Bosco the last two years. They yeah. BCHS, St. Joe. Yeah. And and this year, I think they've proven they're the solid number three team in the league. Uh, Stockdale obviously having a great season, but uh, – I, I Gars is, is the better team here, and you got to look at the Stockdale game against Frontier last year. It probably should have been a bigger win, but it wasn't. They only won by three, and Garces wiped the floor with Frontier in that game. So um, I'll take Garces 31-27. I'm going out on a limb this week. I don't that, know that's fair. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. I I saw your picks come in, and I this was the first game that I noticed, and I was like, you know, I've probably covered Garces, what, three weeks in a row? Sure. Four weeks in a row, something like that. And in each of the, those games – so you, know, you live in Arvin, but you go to Garces. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, in each of those games, you know, against BHS, against Liberty, there have been multiple possessions where I've looked at the Garces defense. And against Centennial, they forced six turnovers. Yeah. And I'm like, this, this is a good Gar Garces defense. Mm -hmm. And I think that'll be the difference. I think they'll force some turnovers. Uh, Joseph Campbell can do a little thing, some things on offense. and. But I think the Garces defense will be the difference, and Garces will win. This is the best week of fo high school football we've had in Kern County. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. There's so many games that are toss up, so many great where both teams have the chance to win. Another one, we've got Frontier on the road at Centennial. Both of these teams are moving on to the playoffs. Frontier, despite the two and seven record and winless in league play, they will move on to D two. Centennial and D one, they will move on as well. They have a five hundred record, but that doesn't even matter anymore. They're moving on anyway, they're five and four, one and three in league. Yeah. Uh, so you look at this game. Frontier, I talked to head coach Chris Bandy. Um, since they are moving on to the playoffs, he's going to give some younger guys a little bit of playing time this week. That's so fair. that yeah. right there indicates that Centennial should roll in this one. Yeah. I mean, they would have regardless, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> been a tough year. It's been a tough year. I mean, they're a mash unit. John, do you now know what that means? Yes. <laughs> uh, and, you know, it's – I mean, that's it. Just injuries have just killed them, you know. Kids have quit. Kids have had disciplinary yeah. issues, school issues, whatever it is. You know, they're just watching one guy after another not being able to, you know, be on the football field for whatever reason, and it's hurting Frontier in the win column. They're going to move on to the playoffs. They're going to go into D2. They're going to have a first-round game. They're probably going to be probably the 11 or 12 and a half to play a game yep. next week, um, unlike last year when they, you know, everybody got moved in the quarterfinals and they did play the next week, mm -hmm. but it was in the quarterfinals against Garces. Garces right. moved on and they ended up losing to Tillery Union in the semifinals, so Tillery Union won. Anyway, um, it's not going to be the case. They're going to play next week, but against whom we'll find out on Saturday. I've got Centennial one in this one, 35-14. Yeah, uh, I've, I've said this every week. Centennial, when they're not pressured, are a good aerial attack team, and I don't think Frontier is the personnel to pressure. Yeah. So. Another huge game out of DJ Adams, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, 42-20 Golden Hawks. Yep. Okay. Uh, last but not least, number three, Liberty. We can just skip over this one. Right? Yeah, yeah. Who cares about oh, this one? Okay. What, what game is it? We're leaving. Good, good night, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Put it back up there, Diana. They were, obviously. <laughs> so you've got number three, Liberty, at number four, BHS. Both teams undefeated in league play. Um, both of these teams, one of these two teams, since Brian Nixon has moved over to the head coach at, over at Liberty back in 2013. One of these two teams has finished 5-0 and in league play. Mm -hmm. It's incredible the dominance that these two programs have had over what is considered the Power League in Kern County yeah. over the last half decade. And you date that even farther back, what BHS is able to do. Let me give you guys a little historical uh, reference here. Paul Gola took over BHS in 2005. The Drillers have gone undefeated in league play five times. Each time the Drillers have won the Central Section Championship that that year. Liberty, since Brian Nixon has taken over, when these two programs are both 4-0 going into this game and Liberty wins this game, they move on to the Central Section Championships. Mm -hmm. They did that in 2014, losing to Edison, and then in 2015, they went on and beat Clovis for Nixon's first ever Central Section Championship. 
that means this game has a lot of implications, historically speaking, for both programs. Yeah. Do either teams care about what happened in the past? No. No, but I do. Because I'm a It's I'm a good a number, talking point. I'm a, it is a good talking point, and I'm a numbers geek. But I love this football t- game. Because when you look at it, what is Liberty really good at? Uh, stopping the run. What is probably their Achilles heel? Stopping the pass. I would, I would actually say their team speed. Okay, that's fair. BHS, what is their number one quality? They have a great secondary. And a lot of team speed. And a lot of speed. But here's the thing. But what's, what are they bad at? Turning the ball over. Yeah. So I think that's a big key here. It, I think it is a huge key here too. And Liberty's defense is so good up front mm-hmm. that there's gonna that they have a great opportunity to disrupt a lot of plays up at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I mean BHS can whip off a 70-yard touchdown run or a 55 touchdown pass from Cam Williams to Carl Jones as quickly as anybody. Isaiah, Isaiah and Isaac Jernigan can take a, a sweep and then cut up the middle and go. Oh, absolutely. Once BHS gets Wesley past Wilson that second Wesley Wilson is great level. up the middle, yeah. running the ball for him, and their secondary is great. However, Liberty's strength also is running the ball. Mm-hmm. And Sam Stewart is a two-way guy, and he doesn't want to lose this game. No, of course not. And when you look at it, I mean, if Liberty has a chance to control the clock. If they don't control the clock, it puts BHS's offense back on the field. Yep. And the more you allow BHS's offense on the field, the more opportunities they're going to get for big plays. You've seen them a lot. That's exactly what it is. You've seen yep. both team both teams quite a bit this year. Yeah. I mean, w- when you look at this game, you look at two very dynamic teams that are very good at very different things. That's exactly it. Yeah. And I think I mean BHS They've got a ton of playmakers. Mm -hmm. Liberty, at times, Liberty has struggled when Sammy Stewart needs to go to the sideline, take a breather, and maybe the drive stalls there. Mm -hmm. But he's not the only guy on the team. They can still run the ball well without him. They've got a great offensive line. doesn't matter who the running back is. No offense to their other running backs. Yeah, Anthony Villanueva. Yeah, Villanueva. Yeah, Yeah. but... uh, Nathan Mariscal. I mean, all those guys. And Hector Gonzalez can do a good job at times, too. He... He's, He's got the he quickest turn guy the ball in Kern County going deep for him in yeah. Ramon Henderson. Yeah, and I would not be surprised if we see Liberty, if they get the ball to start the game, if they take a shot deep. Yeah, start why not? Game. Yeah. See if they're sleeping. Exactly. I have three key matchups in this game, and we've kind of glossed over them. Number one, uh, Liberty's rushing game against BHS's front seven. They know BHS's secondary is great. I mean, they might take a couple shots at him, but overall, I don't think they take many. They don't throw the ball that much. I think they mm-hmm. stick to a running game yeah, and wear down that clock. control the clock, wear down that front seven, and don't even test the secondary. Win the game on the first two levels of the defense. Number two is BHS's offense against Liberty's front seven. Liberty has probably the best front seven in the city. They attack. They cause turnovers. They stop the run and. BHS has to figure out how to get past those first two levels yep. of defense and try to get to that third level. I'm not saying uh, Liberty secondary is any bad. I'm just saying their front seven is that good. Okay. Third key, discipline versus discipline. These The losses we've seen from these two teams have been, oh, because they had 14 penalties or because they turned the ball over five times. My key here is that I think Liberty's front seven is good enough to cause a, a at times sloppy BHS team to turn the ball over multiple times, which I think will be the key for them winning this game. I agree with you on that last point 100%. I've seen all four losses for BHS and Liberty on the field. First play, first series, they gave up a pick. Liberty gave up a pick six to Mission Viejo. Mm-hmm. Both of BHS's losses to Sierra Canyon and to Servite came because the offense couldn't keep the ball off the ground. Yep. Liberty could not s- stop themselves from stalling offensive drives against Buchanan. Mm-hmm. And that was the biggest thing is that yep. offense did not do their job. Right. So, yeah, it is discipline, discipline. If both teams are disciplined, God, I don't know. This moment might go into overtime. Well, if both yeah. teams are disciplined, they'd both be 9-0 and right now. Yes, very much so. <laughs> so, um, But they're not. And well, that's, I, I uh, don't know. I th- yeah. well, well, on, on paper, Liberty would be. BHS should have beat Serbi. Liberty would have gotten the forfeit win regardless. So. Yeah, so on paper, yeah, both of them should have been. Yeah. So uh, with that, I will go ahead and tell you guys, I've got Liberty winning this one in a close one, 28-24. Josh? When I first made this pick, 
I flipped a coin because I was unsure. I, it came up Liberty 3534, little flip coin flip. Now that I've looked into it yesterday, today, I have Liberty probably by two scores here. Okay. Wow. I think Bold it'll statement. I think it'll be reminiscent to the Sierra Canyon game. Okay. For BHS. John. I've got BHS. I think for BHS to win this game, first of all, I think you kind of you know, you let your on in the secondary, you let your guys on the outside play man coverage. You compress that defense, throw the, throw everything you got into the box and just focus on stopping the run, make him beat you there. Maybe you've got some speed guys that can hit gaps, cause a little disruption. Maybe. Yeah. On offense, See if you can get around the edges, spread out a little bit, you know, little swing passes and things like that. that they can do some pitches um, and just kind of beat guys to the sidelines. Be, and, you know, then you're scoring 60 yard touchdown runs. I, I think that's the one way BHS can beat Liberty's front seven is just outspeed yeah. them. Yep. And so it could happen. I'm not saying it definitely will happen, but hey, well, I got BHS in this. Well, one. I, I'll tell you this too for BHS, and I know I picked against them, but the one determining factor for them, and we'll get more into the bracketology tomorrow night yep. in our post game show. They know uh, it's on the line here too. And yeah. they've been turning no, the ball over. That's an emphasis. Well, you know what's on the line for them? A likely two seed. Yeah. They likely could have the two seed because the argument is going to be there. They have a, a they'll have an eight and two record because you know Buchanan's a favorite over Clovis North. Of course. So they're both going to have an eight two, eight and two record. Buchanan's not going to be the league champs. It's going to be Central. Yep. Central beat Buchanan. Liberty win or lose. They lost to Buchanan. They lost to Buchanan, so the head-to-head is there. They have to be behind Buchanan. Yep. However, BHS doesn't have that problem. No. So if Buchanan. I mean, win, lose, or draw tonight against Clo- or tomorrow night against Clovis North. BHS, there is a legitimate argument, and when it comes down to coaches' polls and strength of schedule, you might look at, you know, people are going to argue, well, hey, you know, they played Central and De La Salle, but you know what? Servite and Sierra Canyon are not bad non out of area non league games either. No, and the thing so is, so there is a possible. Well, yeah, and the thing is too is Buchanan would have the one uh, division loss, uh, Valley loss. BHS doesn't have a value loss. Exactly. So they would have the argument. Yep. So you have that. If they won. A uh, little bit of bracketology. If you're looking ahead, it, it appears that in Division Two, so the top four seeds are going to be Central Buchanan and Liberty BHS, most and likely. Number There's, one's going to be Central. Yeah, because Clovis cannot jump up. Clovis, uh, St. Joe cannot bump no. up into the four. Mm-hmm. There's just no way. Those top four, it's just a matter of how two through four yeah. are ending up because we'll find out tonight. You know, right around 7.15, yeah. how much Central is up on Clovis East, and then yeah. we're going to write that one off. Uh, <laughs> well, but, that's the thing, too. The loser of this game is going to have to play Central in the semis. Yeah. Which you is don't want to do that. No. Yeah. And I'll tell you this. Liberty wants Buchanan again as oh, quickly yeah. as possible. Of course. Uh, Division two, it appears, you know, the winner of Tulare Union, Tulare Western tomorrow night is going to be the one seed. The yep. two seed is going to be the loser of that one because Rigetti's not going to move up. Mm-hmm. No way. It appears Rigetti, regardless of how they play against St. Joe, which is such a cool game. They literally walk across the street and play the game. They warm up in their gym and they walk across the street. How rad like, is that's that? That's cool. It's literally, it's, it's. A, a stoplight yeah. across from the two campuses. That's, that's so it, likely, I would say, the Rigetti's going to get the three seed. Dinuba is going to play Hanford West. They're going to win that one. They're mm-hmm. going to be the four seed in D2. In D3, I think San Joaquin Memorial, regardless of what they do yeah. against Sanger. Sanger, actually, if they could beat Memorial, Sanger could actually move up pretty high. Yeah. Almost right. up to the seven seed in D1. But I think Memorial, win, win or lose, are going to stay as a one seed. Mm-hmm. B- BCHS likely will get the two seed. Yeah. Kingsburg is going to get the three seed. They're mm-hmm. playing Selma. And you know what? If Independence does beat Ridge, you, there is a good chance that Independence can move up to the four seed. They should. So we'll see what Independence yeah. is able to do. Um, and D4, no locals are going to be in the top four. The no. only way that that happens is if Wasco beats Shafter. Yeah, then we- the argument for Wasco to move up to the four seed is possibly there. But either way, I think Wasco is going to get a yep. home game. So. And then Division Five, Shafter. I think it's going to be Shafter, Kennedy, Liberty, Badera Ranchos, yeah. Carruthers. Yep. In that order. Yep. yep. Okay. And D six. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we have anyone there. So D six. Cool beans. Cool. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for our director Diana Rodriguez. John, do you want to just read off how I say this? No. Okay. For Josh Bennett, for John Menace, I am Trevor Horn. This is B-Var City Live. We've got B-Var City Nightly tonight. Volleyball action. I'll be out at BHS. We'll have highlights as the Drillers take on Clovis North. And then we've got game night tomorrow night, 11-15, right here in the studio. We're back in the studio. We're going to go over all the regular season finales tomorrow night right here on BigSoul.com and the B-Var City Live Facebook page. Thank you for watching. We'll see you tonight on B-Var City Nightly. Bye-bye.